welcome back everyone. I'm Sarah and in this video I'm going to be covering glycolysis. This is about the tenth time I've tried recording this so hopefully this time I'll get it right. I had to stop a couple of times because I noticed I made some mistakes blah 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 blah. I haven't had any caffeine today so I'm struggling. I'm, a, I, I'm addicted to energy drinks. It's bad but I'm a normal college student, 22, I mean I've taken 18 hours, and I'm double majoring in biochemistry and microbiology, so my days are not easy. But anyways, enough about me, let's get started on some cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is how cells produce energy. Energy is normally stored in a molecule called adenosine triphosphate, I can't even talk today. Anyways. ATP, adenosine triphosphate, this energy is stored in a phosphate bond at the end of this molecule. You've got these three negative charges here. Some, normally these two are stabilized by a magnesium ion. You don't need to know that. But these three negative charges here don't like being next to each other. So it's, it's a very high energy bond and as soon as this last phosphate group can get kicked off, it's going to get kicked off. Another molecule important for cellular respiration is called nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. It carries electrons. It is a redox molecule, which means it... Redox means oxidation and reduction. Oxidized molecules have less electrons. Reduced molecules have more electrons. You might see me write this as NADH. This is the reduced form, which means it has two more electrons. NAD is the oxidized form, which means it has two less electrons. Glycolysis is a form of anaerobic respiration, meaning that this does not require the presence of oxygen. You can do it without oxygen. So, it occurs in a heck of a lot of organisms. It occurs in the cytoplasm. It can happen in bacteria who live in like hot springs and swamps, places where there's little to no oxygen. Or it can happen in animals, plants, fungi, protists, what have you. It happens in pretty much everything. The first step of glycolysis is when the molecule glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate using the enzyme hexokinase, and this is going to use one molecule of ATP to produce one molecule of ADP. This enzyme is going to take that last high-energy phosphate bond from ATP, and it's going to stick it on the sixth carbon here of glucose, as you can see. Glucose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 6-phosphate by a enzyme called phosphoglucose isomerase. Glucose is a 6-membered ring. You can see here fructose is a 5-membered ring, so this enzyme is just going to switch one of these bonds over. The first carbon kind of cakes out doing its own little thing, but the phosphate is still attached to the 6th carbon of the molecule. Phosphofructokinase is going to take another phosphate group off of an adenosine triphosphate and stick it on the fructose 6-phosphate to produce fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So unlike fructose 6-phosphate, you can see here, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate has this extra phosphate group sitting on the first carbon of the molecule. Fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is broken down into two 3-carbon substituents by the enzyme, enzyme aldolase. These two 3-carbon substituents are glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. And these two molecules can be interconverted by the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase. So from here on out, all the, the rest of the steps in glycolysis you're going to have two molecules being reacted instead of one. So you're going to get double the product. But anyways, you can see your glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate phosphate stuck on the third carbon here, and you also have dihydroxyacetone phosphate right here. You're going to have 
your glyceraldehyde three phosphate molecules. Remember, you have two of them now because your dihydroxyacetone phosphate is converted into glyceraldehyde three phosphate. So you're going to have your th two glyceraldehyde three phosphates converted to one three bisphosphoglycerates using the enzyme glyceraldehyde phosphate dehydrogenase. For each molecule you have, for each molecule of glyceraldehyde three phosphate, you have one inorganic phosphate and one oxidized form of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. This is going to be converted into the reduced form of NAD and one three bisphosphoglycerate. The inorganic phosphate is going to be stuck onto the first carbon here of bisphosphoglycerate. Your two molecules of bisphosphoglycerate are going to be converted into two molecules of three phosphoglycerate. The extra phosphorus, or excuse me, phosphate group from carbon one is going to be stuck onto adenosine diphosphates, ADP, to produce ATP. This is what you want. The cell wants energy, the cell needs energy. Here's your energy. So you can see here you've got your 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate with the phosphate groups on both carbons 1 and 3. 3 phosphoglycerate is only going to have the phosphate group on the third carbon. Your two molecules of 3 phosphoglycerate are going to be converted into 2 phosphoglycerates by the enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase. This just means that the phosphate group from the third carbon is going to be switched over to the second carbon and this hydroxide ion here, or hydroxyl group rather here, is going to be switched over to the uh, third carbon. So you got your phosphate group on the second, the hydroxyl group on the third. Quick switch. Your two phosphoglycerates are converted into a molecule called phosphoenol pyruvate by the molecule enolase. It's going to remove some water from your second and third carbons here. You've got the hydroxyl group here, this hydrogen here. It's going to stick in a double bond right there. And the last step of glycolysis is going to be the conversion of your phosphoenol pyruvates to pyruvates using the molecule, excuse me, enzyme pyruvate kinase. You're going to have one ADP per molecule of phosphoenol pyruvate converted to one ATP, giving you two more ATPs. Also, makes us so happy. You want energy, you got energy. But yeah, this phosphate group is going to be taken off. The double bond disappears, actually goes back up to this oxygen. Get another hydrogen on there. Everybody's happy. So the overall process is for every one molecule of glucose, two molecules of NAD, two molecules of ADP, and two inorganic phosphates, you get two molecules of pyruvate, two reduced versions of NAD, two protons or hydrogen ions, two molecules of water, and two molecules of ATP. The biggest thing you need to remember from this is glycolysis produces two ATP. And I know some of you might be asking why only two? You're supposed to get four because you get two from each molecule. This is true, but you have to use two ATP to get the four ATP, so the net yield is only two ATP. But that's all I have for glycolysis. I'll do my next videos on oxidative phosphorylation or anaerobic or excuse me aerobic respiration and probably photosynthesis sometime soon after that